Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to give you all a brief overview of the Johnson Controls controller configuration tool, more commonly known as CCT. There are going to be a few differences between the version that I show you compared to some of the versions out there that some of you guys might be using. Uh, the version that I'm currently running is version 10.1. There are a few differences between this version of CCT compared to some of the prior versions. Nothing too dramatic, but uh, there are a few things that have been moved around. The first thing that I thought we would do is simply jump right in and write a simple program to give you all a little bit of an understanding of how this tool works. From this screen here, which is what we will see when we open CCT, we will simply go up to File, New. It will ask the name. First of all, this little pop-up window gives us a little bit of information. We're just going to call this AHU, uh, nothing too major. Uh, we're just going to keep this simple, just a quick, quick brief uh, run through of some of this. You can, uh, from this window, you can select the various types of systems that you're going to be programming, whether it's an air handler, a fan coil, unit vent, heat pump, that sort of thing, uh, central heat plant, and just all of the various options down through here. And you can also select the units, whether you're going to use imperial or metric, some of the more specific things, whether it's a mixed air system, 100% uh, outside air makeup unit, rooftop unit. You know, pretty standard for uh, you guys who are familiar with programming some of these. So we're just going to go right on through. The selection tree is where you will decide some of the specifics for your particular system, the type of fan control, uh, as well as some of the other specifics about it. And uh, we're just going to leave all of this default for what we're doing with this. It's just an overview. So we're just going to hit next. And here are some more of the specifics that you will need to know about the uh, system that you're doing as far as like the damper outputs uh, of course you know it's asking here if we want feedback and that sort of thing we're just going to leave all of this default but once again though just uh, select what applies to your system once we hit finish it's going to go ahead and populate a lot of the programming logic blocks for us in the system so we will let this uh, populate and we'll come right back as soon as it's finished. Here we are in our program that we have just written. We can see that we have our uh, network inputs, our outputs, all of the logic blocks that are default. This is basically standard out of the box type stuff. We're going to expand this just a little bit and look at a few specifics inside here. So I am going to hit my expansion button. I'm going to maximize this. Currently, uh, we have uh, just set this up. Everything is a default. But if we wanted to modify some of the items, and particularly some of the logic blocks, what we would do there is simply right-click the particular block that we wanted to modify. We can select View Logic. And this is where we're really getting into the meat and potatoes of the programming. Inside this area here, we can customize this however we would need if uh, it's a specific application, it's something that uh, it's a very powerful powerful tool and uh, gives you a lot of flexibility on your system. We're simply going to go back to our control. And here, as far as like your inputs, your outputs, you uh, can go into the defining hardware section. And what this will allow us to do is some customization as far as the field device. Of course, when you do your system, when you set it up, you're going to need to know exactly how many inputs and outputs that you're going to need, your, uh, how many analog inputs, how many analog outputs, that sort of thing, depending on uh, how your system is configured. You can select that from this. Of course, the system will put in a default controller for what it thinks you are wanting this for. You can uh, get pretty specific here as far as defining which of the controllers that you're going to be using. And, of course, now we're just going to leave this as a default. Now then, point assignment. This is 
pretty interesting here as far as what we have. If you are running a system where you have a couple of extra points being used, say if you're using a binary output to control a fan, an exhaust fan, or some type of an additional control, or lighting, or just whatever, uh, you would have set that up in your programming. Of course, you can do that now under the control screen uh, that we were at prior. Uh, but this is where you would see that populate and then you would simply add it to one of the points that is open. You can see here for this particular controller how the system has already defined it uh, as far as some of the points. The discharge air temperature it has assigned to the universal input number one. Now one of the neat things about CCT if you needed to move a particular point to another hardware output on your controller or input, you can simply click and drag and it will automatically move that for you. You can then connect your device to these particular points instead of these others. Now, instances where you might uh, want to do something like that, if you're in a situation to where you have had an input or an output fail and you have a point available on that controller until you can get a replacement, you can simply move that input or that output to, an, to a point that you have open. If you had added some analog inputs or outputs, you would simply drag them over to this screen as well and of course connect them to the appropriate points on your controller. Your network settings these devices uh, are network specific. These programs are network specific. Once you write the programming and you connect your device to the network that you have it on, it's going to look for the particular address in the program. If you have multiple air handlers with the same program in them, the same type of controller, and you have different program device addresses, you will not be able to load one program into the other. That's kind of a safety feature. And there are a lot of options through here. We're just scanning through some of these real quickly. Uh, into mapping, if you wanted to uh, get into some of the specifics for creating the point schedule that you're going to be pulling into Metasys, you can do that from here. So it's a very, very powerful tool. Now, once you have your program completely written, you will then, of course, load it into the controller. You will go in through your commissioning and then set up all of your final details and settings of your program. Do all of your fine tuning then. Anyways, guys, this is just a very brief overview of the Johnson Controls controller configuration tool. Uh, there, of course, I'm sure could be many questions. There's much variability to this program depending on your application. Anyways, guys, I really appreciate it if you would take the time to like the video, give it a thumbs up, and be sure to drop me a comment with any questions down below.